occasionally you need to go into a cell and find where a certain character or characters are. So in this example we've got a bit of data and you'll notice that there are hashes here that seem to split these columns but they're not at the exact same space. So this one's a lot longer so this hash is let's say at character 20. This one is about 13. So if we want to use our left right mids the problem here is how many from the left must we do? Is it 20, 21? And we don't want to manually do it. So it's a very useful function in Excel is a find and search. We're going to use find but search is the same thing except it's not case sensitive. So let's go and do a find. So we want to find and here we specify what we're looking for. So in this case it's a hash. So in inverted commas I'm going to put a hash. It then says where must it go look for this hash, I'm going to point over here and you'll see that it's already said it's at character 14. The start number for now will leave blank, let's say OK. And you'll notice now when we copy down it has gone and checked in each cell where is the hash. Now why is that useful? Well if we now wanted to extract everything to the left of that hash we can make use of our left function, we can say please look at that cell there. How many characters to the left do you want to go? We don't type in the number, we say look over here and you'll notice that it does 14 characters. Now this is why the function wizard is so useful to us because you can see that 14 actually is going to include the hash. So I know that I don't want that hash, so I'm just going to put a minus 1 here. When I say OK, I can now copy this down and you'll see that immediately it now pulls out only the word up to that first hash. But now we've got a, another issue because we can see there's a second hash and we would like to know where it is because we'd like to pull out this middle section and this end section. Now the end section is fairly easy, you can see it's always three characters so we don't even have to work on that. I'm just going to use my write function. I'm just going to say look at that text and give me three characters. So that one's relatively easy. But the problem is we now need to pull out the second hash. So again we're going to use our find function. What we're looking for, so it's pretty much exactly the same. We're looking for the hash. We must go look, we must go look over here. Notice that it's immediately found the 14 again. And that's because by default it always starts at the first character. So we can now tell it, no, don't start at the first character. If we've already found the first hash here, then rather start. So we could type it in, but I'd rather you link to it. And if I click on here, you'll see, oops, it's still, it's starting at character 14. It finds it, it tells you. So generally speaking, the start number you're always going to have to say plus 1. And you'll notice now that what it's done is it said the second hash is at character 26. I can say OK. I can copy it down. And you'll see it's now gone and found where in each case is the second hash. We now need to pull out these details. You'll see we're going to do it using the mid function and I'm just going to use the function wizard again just to show you how useful it is to be able to see what's happening with the answer before you actually click enter. So it looks, says where's the text, I'm going to say it's over here. Where must it start looking? So remember we want to pull this section out here. So I'm going to say well you must start please at this character here. Now for now I'm going to leave it like that even though it's technically wrong. How many characters must Excel pull out? Well, I think it must look for that hash, look for that hash, and whatever the difference is between these two is the answer. So I've built it here, so I'm going to say it's that minus that. Notice that if we leave it like that, it's going to pull the first hash, and that's because we told it to start exactly at character 14. So I think I need a plus one here. Now notice, because of the way we've set it up, it's pulling the last hash. So I know that I need this one to be minus one. So occasionally you're going to have these plus one minus ones. It's a lot easier 
to do it through the function wizard and actually see what's happening, then type it, click enter, see it's wrong, and then go in and out. So when I say OK, you've got that. And when I copy it down, you'll see it now pulls through the items between the hashes. This was using the find function. The search function is exactly the same. Only difference is it's not case sensitive. And it does allow wildcard characters. So either one of these two will work well.